here is the beauty shot. Wow. That is an immaculate Juno L6. Absolutely immaculate. Everything about that front panel is perfect. Clean and rebuilt. New looking. Awesome. Yeah. I'm very pleased with this and I'm sure Dave will be too. So that's fantastic. Um, now I guess we're going to have to move on to cleaning up this dirty key bed. Yuck! So what does this involve? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the key bed from the Juno and move the Juno off to the side so that it's not involved in all the fun and games. Um, so I've got one, two, and three bolts here. Um, and then on the bottom, and again, here's where we do have bolts on the bottom. There's one here, one here, one here, and one here. And uh, we take all those out, and this key bed will come clear. Clear. It'll come clean. It'll come clear. Okay. <laughs> this back up. Okay, let's get that key bed out. Alright, with the uh, bolts removed, all six of them, we now have to take a look at which of the plugs we're going to unplug on the CPU. And there's one remaining zip tie, yes I'll call it the right word this time, it's a zip tie to cut. We'll cut the zip tie. There you go, Gollum, who's no longer using Gollum as his icon. He's now using a fairly medieval looking sun. It's very, very nice. Anyway, <laughs> um, here is the zip tie cut clear. Okay, so what do we got? Basically, what's coming from the key bed is two wires, two bundles, a green one, one with a heavy green, well actually they both kind of have heavy green. Uh, one of them goes down here, and the other one up here. And now the key bed is clear. So just uh, for references sake, we take a look at them, they look pretty similar. Um, <clears throat> but the one, this one here, that comes from the inside, is the one that goes to the uppermost, uh, the rightmost, and so it seemed a little counterintuitive. And the one that comes from the outside is the one that goes to the leftmost. So it's uh, it's an inversion. The rightmost on the keyboard is the leftmost on the CPU board, and the leftmost on the keyboard is the rightmost on the CPU board. Okay, so there's your rule of thumb there, um, and uh, we'll be right back once we get this guy put away safely. And here's the key bed removed from the Juno 106, and after I took it out, I used some spray, some cleaning spray, and some paper towels, and I gave the inside of that key bed, the, the bottom plate, and the inside rail a good cleaning, and boy, did I turn up a lot of black gunk. Now, this is to be expected, because when you are playing the synth, Crap is falling through, dandruff, skin cells, you know, associated things, smoke particles in the air if it's a smoky nightclub, and that kind of thing. And basically over the decades it, it accumulates down underneath. So this is one of the reasons why I always say when you're in here doing the work, why not do some cleaning because it's pretty much the only chance you're going to get to do that. And that's another reason why we're taking this key bed apart. So let's get on with that. Now, this key bed mechanism is very, very standard amongst rolling gear, and I cover it in great detail uh, in a lot of other playlists, so maybe I even shouldn't be wasting the time to document this, but since I want this playlist to be totally complete, I'm going to include it uh, one more time. 
And uh, basically, if we take a look, you see there is a plastic, a sort of a Lexan strip. And if you take a look at what it's doing, it's actually stopping these tabs from sliding all the way back. And it's self-adhesive. Basically got some double-sided tape holding it down. And that double-sided tape is actually quite reusable, as long as you don't get fingerprints all over the inside. So I'm going to carefully, uh, carefully peel this up. It's always a little tricky at first. Even more tricky if you have a video camera in your face while you're trying to do it. When I reapply this, I'm actually going to use fresh adhesive, but um, I have just put them back in. Okay, let me hold this down so you can see more of the process, although realistically it's, it's not that exciting. Take great care not to put any kinks in it. Don't pull it up too sharply or you will have trouble because you want it to be able to lie totally flat when you return it. Okay, so there it is. Completely removed. And uh, I have found that you can store them just by coiling them up. But uh, in this case, I'm not going to because I plan on putting this key bed back together fairly soon. So I'm just going to take this and put this over on my Chroma Polaris over here so it doesn't get uh, lost. All right, so now, put this back over. And I suppose we best start at the bottom end of the keyboard. So I'm going to move the tripod. Just hang on a second here. I'll admit this is going to be a little bit rocky, and I'm sure YouTube will suggest that they we fix the shakiness in the video. But... <coughs> Okay, that little eagle. The eagle has landed. All right, so here we are back at the bottom end of the key bed. So we have springs, springs all the way along. And I'm just going to get one of my snap boxes here so that we can do this right. Put it right here. And uh, this is a pair of pointed pliers with a bend in them, and I find that they are really handy. I uh, bought these on the recommendation of Paul uh, DiRocco, um, who uh, is uh, the Chroma Polaris lead engineer, who designer, who redid his panels. Uh, and uh, if you followed my Chroma Polaris um, rebuild videos, you'll have seen these before. They're recommended in Paul DiRocco's uh, panel replacement instructions and so I went up and bought some for that and they work great in that and they also come in very handy for this task and that is what you want to do is you want to grab the end and pull it up like that see and now we have a spring clear so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna drop it over in here so you see where it went there it is all right so let's proceed Okay, so that's uh, 
that's all the springs and here they are all the springs safe off to the side now let's get in a little bit closer all right so really all you got to do now is just pull and the key comes out like that because you see the little hook underneath and how do we know who is who um, let's take a closer look on the underside nah, here it is let's see if you can see that or not there we are CF1 so in other words this is a C or an F and I'm not sure about the one but that's okay I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with being in a lower octave D right D okay EB1 that's what that says EB1 so that's either an E or a B and this says CF2 G A and then it says E B two. Okay, let's uh, keep going, and uh, I'll zoom back out. Uh, of course, the lower octaves, just to show you here. Uh, the, the black keys are all identical. All identical. So there's no particular marking on them at all. Let's tip all these out. And we're exposing, of course, the circuit board with the contact membrane, and then these are the rubber membrane domes for the contacts. We're going to look into those a little bit closer. Um, but uh, I'm going to just put this back on time lapse and we'll get the rest of this key bed off. Right, so the very last key, of course, is the universal, what we call the, the wide white, or the wide C, extra wide C. I'm sure it has other names. Uh, according to Roland, they call it CF, because it could be an F as well. So one thing we did notice from taking a look at this great big pile of keys that we took out was that the uh, CF1 was the C, and the CF2 was the F, and the... EB1 was the E, and the EB2 was the B. Now, you might say, well, well, why did I do this? Why did I take this entire key bed apart like that? I was trying to make work for myself. Well, I don't know if you can see this, but these keys are dirty. Dirty all around, the, the bottoms, the sides, everything. Uh, why not give them a good cleaning while you've got the synth apart? Additionally, take a look at this board down here. Now, again... This board has been on the receiving end 
of all of the falling matter <laughs> over the last two and a bit decades. So, uh, so two and a bit, three and a bit. Well, whatever. I forget. I'm so old I can't even keep track of time anymore. Um, but here we go. These are the... Um, this stuff needs to get cleaned. So uh, <laughs> what we're going to do now is take all these keys and dump them in the sink and uh, load it up with good piping soapy water and it's going to be just like doing dishes. That's right, Dave. I'm doing your dishes. And while all those keys are soaking in that sink, uh, in the soapy water, I'm going to use this paper towel to eliminate all of this filth uh, just with some IPA from this pump bottle. So, here we go. Alright, so um, <clears throat> now we've got this uh, board totally cleaned. Give you a, a close up of what the board looks like now. And believe me, it makes a difference, um, not just in just cosmetics, but at the same time, we are eliminating anything that might possibly cause contact problems in the future by cleaning this now. So it's sort of a preemptive thing. Now, um, I, I'm going to do this, uh, I'm going to actually start taking off the contact rubbers um, just to... <sighs> do I really want to do this or not? Because there's really nothing to be gained from opening up the, the contact rubbers if there isn't already, a, if there isn't a problem. Um, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave these in place and uh, when we reassemble the key bed, if it turns out that there's contact switch problems, then we'll come back and revisit, because these are basically, uh, this is a sealed dome, it, it makes contact, the little rubber nipples here pop through the other side and hold it down fairly fast. So what goes on underneath is usually pretty clean. Um, obviously my main concern is just to clean the outside area. Um, so. <clears throat> There you go. You saw me change my mind. If you actually want to see what it's like when these guys are lifted up and cleaned, and I've done this on other Juno 106 videos where I had a key bed that was so filthy that the keys were actually weren't making proper contact and I had to take these off, then by all means check those out. Um, and of course in the Poly 6 series uh, I actually am resurfacing some of these rubber domes uh, with some metallic silver um, varnish and uh, to re restore the con connectivity, uh, the contact of the contact. Anyway, uh, that's notwithstanding. Uh, let's get on with washing those. <sighs> it's just like washing dishes, really. Um, let's go wash those keys. Hey, are you ready to wash some keys? Yeah, it's going to be great. So, here's the soapy water. Here's the keys. Here's the brush. Is it any different than doing dishes? Not really, except maybe the dishes don't have 30 years worth of groat on them. Um, anyway, so basically all I'm doing is giving these guys a bit of a scrub and then a, a quick rinse and then a, this cool chamois I got at the hardware store. Oh, chamois, rag. Give them a nice little once over. And then I have a hanging bag here where I just throw the key. So that's the drawing bag there. Seems like a system to me. All right, I'm going to uh, proceed along.
Hey everybody, welcome back. So uh, my camera ran out of drive space, believe it or not, while I was doing that incredible action-packed washing keys in the sink montage. I know you're probably sad that it didn't go on any longer, because God knows it was sure very interesting, wasn't it? <coughs> so, uh, happily, we've moved on now. All of the keys have been dried and cleaned, and I'm going to reassemble this key bed. So, uh, the first thing to just note here is this is a CF1 key which would be the lowest key and as you can see the these guys just go into the slots like this and that would be how it would go but obviously we need to uh, install the um, the black keys first so we now know that this is where a black key goes move this out of the way and easy enough you just hook them like this and that's the black key installed so I'm um, just using, because they're all exactly the same, I can basically indiscriminately say, okay, well, all black keys go in the same way, and we know the good old pattern. It's 2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3, uh, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, right? <laughs> because the Juno 106 starts on a C. So uh, basically I'm skipping one, and now I'm going to skip two over here to get me that guy and then skip one again. A bit of dirt in there. Shouldn't be. I cleaned this whole thing out, but uh, never know. All right. Okay, so that is basically uh, the full full octaves worth. So this is a CF1. So we know the CF1 goes down on the bottom. So I'll just put this one back. CF1. And now it's just a matter of EB1, so this is going to be the E, because it's the 1. A D, this is a D. Like that. This one here is a G. I'm reading the embossed letters underneath in case you weren't familiar with the technique. So there's that. G. Uh, this is a CF2, so this is the F. So you see how that whole skip one, skip two thing totally works? Um, and this is an A. I'm getting lucky here. I'm just grabbing these almost at random and putting the right keys. And this one here is a CF2, so that's no good. This one is a C EB2, so this is perfect. Um, and there you have it. That's one octave's worth. So I'm going to uh, go along now and um, take care of the rest. Let's see, can I zoom out any further? No, I can't. Okay, so I'm just going to do the rest now and maybe we'll time lapse this. Maybe we won't. So let's, uh, let's go. Okay, so we have the uh, key bed reassembled now. It's not sprung yet. Um, and now what I am going to do is, uh, this is, I guess, a, we'll call this a value-added perk for Dave. Um, certainly not something I would typically do. This is the kind of thing I do when I'm building an alpha unit. And that is, I want one that's going to be absolutely perfect. I'll go down the key bed looking for imperfections or damage. And there we have some right there. That F, uh, that, um, that's 
C sharp D flat is scratched. I did not buy this D sharp, it is scratched. Okay, so that one I'm going to actually replace with an impeccable one from my collection. Um, my parts collection. And I believe. It's okay. Uh, look at this. This guy's got a nick on him as well. So we'll get rid of him. Place him with a nice one. Keep on going. All right. Everything else looks great. Whoop. There's a imperfection on this one. Is this guy okay? Let me see. Hmm. There's a, bound to be a little bit of a little bit of chipping and marring at the top, only because that's where the case touches down. I think this one's okay. It's got a, a little bit of wiring at the top, but yeah, the key itself is good. So this uh, is a CF1, so this is a C. Let's put that over here. Yeah, it can just go over there. All right, um, so it's kind of looking like these three keys, once upon a time something bad happened at this location. Um, and these three keys got a little bit of scuffing on them. That's that's my theory anyway. So I'm just going to go dig through my collection of uh, parts and see if I can come up with three replacement keys. Now we have three replacement keys in from another set of keys that I had standing by. And these ones are completely um, free of any kind of scratches or damages. So now the next thing to do is to put the springs back in place. So I've got them here, and uh, the routine is pretty much the same as before. But what I do is loop it over the, the top, then I grab the spring with the pliers and lock it in place like that. Okay, so that's pretty much that routine. Let me, um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to zoom in and do this again. Let's zoom in right here. Okay. And that key is this one or this one. This one will be fine. Okay. So basically I'm going to take the spring and make sure that the hook is pointing down when I position it. So there it is, over the loop like that. One finger over the loop so that in the case it springs back it doesn't go flying. Out of control. If these things fly out of control, you're not going to find them very easily. Okay, so there's uh, one key re-sprung. So I hope that uh, makes it clear what the routine is. I'm going to zoom back out again and uh, get underway. Probably time lapse this guy because it's going to take a while. Here we go.
All right, <clears throat> that is this key bed completely resprung now. And uh, just going to inspect the, uh, just inspect it along here, just to make sure that every single one of these guys is in fact in a hole. Kind of important. If one of them's loose, uh, not quite in the hole, it could spring out and cause you a lot of trouble. All right, so um, let's just give this a little bit of a dusting here. Okay, actually before I flip this over, I'm going to lay down a cloth. I don't want to scratch these, these keys. We're going to lay this over and we're going to put the strip on the back next. Okay, welcome back. I am uh, now applying double-sided tape to the back side of the original plastic strip, which, as you recall, we peeled out and I am just basically using this double-sided tape dispenser gun. Hang on a moment, we're almost done. There we go. Okay, so that has now uh, coated the backside of this strip with double-sided adhesive. Now you could use um, glue stick or, or one of those little handheld guys from the Office Depot or the Staples near your house uh, or other office supply store. It needn't be uh, anywhere near as elaborate as what I just did. Um, I just happen to have one of those guns, so tape dispenser guns, so it's standing by, so I use it. All right, so now I'm just basically putting this strip back in place. Using the old markings as my guide and it's adhering down nicely okay now important to note I've got this in place I'm going to bring up can I'm going to bring it up to the camera to show you um, it's important to note that there is a small gap between the plastic strip and the keys. If you if you put the plastic strip right up against the keys like that, you're actually going to create squeaky noises and resistance and friction and everything else. So uh, it's not actually meant to contact the back of the keys. It's actually just there in the case that the keys get pulled. Um, so this key bed is now completely cleaned and is ready for reassembly into Dave's Juno 106. So let's do that and let's check it out.